My name is Kaylee Hoots and I'm a student at Wingate University School of Pharmacy and I will be talking about the role of metformin in type 1 diabetes. Taking a look at the American Diabetes Association guidelines for diabetes management, type 1 therapy really resol revolves around insulin, so patients will be on a basal bolus regimen, versus our type 2 patients will be on metformin initially along with lifestyle changes. Later on, patients can be placed on other oral agents or even injectables. So a lot of our metformin patients sometimes end up on insulin therapy to get adequate control of their glucose. So this leads me to my next question. Does oral therapy, specifically metformin, have a place in type 1 diabetes management? Taking a look at metformin, it has three main mechanisms of action. So the first is increased insulin sensitivity in the periphery that leads to increased glucose uptake by skeletal muscle cells. Also increased sensitivity to insulin within the liver. So this inhibits gluconeogenesis. And then glu glucose is also, the absorption is decreased by metformin in the intestines as well. With this mechanism, there's low probability that metformin can induce hypoglycemia. And a potential reason for this to be used in type 1 patients is with the patients that have extremely high total daily doses, metformin can enhance insulin sensitivity, which can lead to a reduction in those doses. In terms of treatment, initially we usually start out at 500 milligrams twice daily, and our goal titration is 2,000 milligrams of the extended release or 2,550 milligrams of our immediate release formulation. The main adverse effect that we're looking for in patients will be gastrointestinal upset, particularly diarrhea with patients. This is the main complaint that we'll see, and also the side effect that usually leads to discontinuation of metformin or a dose that's not completely at goal. When patients' renal function gets below an estimated GFR of 30, this is when metformin is going to be contraindicated because the risk of lactic acidosis goes up at this point. So next, I'd like to take a look at some trials that look at metformin in type 1 patients. The removal trial, the main purpose of this one was to see if the cardiovascular benefits that are seen in type 2 patients with metformin is also seen in type 1 patients. Patients were required to have a type 1 diagnosis for at least five years. The trial included a little over 400 patients for a three-year follow-up period. The primary outcome was the average change in the carotid interna media thickness between the metformin and placebo groups. Secondary outcomes looked at various clinical and lab changes, and the tertiary outcome was looking at the carotid interna media thickness as well, but this was the change over time. The primary outcome was not statistically significant. However, the tertiary outcome was significant, so the change of the carotid interna media thickness over time was statistically reduced. However, the study didn't make note of any cardiac events that occurred, so it leaves the audience wondering how this correlates with clinical events. So a study would need, be needed to, to look and see what the meaning of that decreased slope might mean. Also, the discontinuation rate was 27% in the metformin group versus 12%, which is attributed to the GI side effects that is commonly that are commonly seen with metformin therapy. Another article, a meta-analysis that looked at 13 randomized control trials, did a search of the literature looking for articles that were seeing how metformin affected type 1 patients. So in order to be included, they just had to be actively comparing metformin versus placebo in those type 1 patients. They looked at some similar outcomes as the removal trial as well. Pertinent outcomes here was a significant reduction in the total daily dose of insulin 
um, along with the LDL. A main difference that we see here is the hypoglycemia that was not reported in the removal trial is statistically significant in this meta-analysis. So our takeaways to be looking for for clinical practice Studies consistently show a significant reduction in the body weight, in insulin total daily dose, and also LDL cholesterol. Not only is the insulin total daily dose statistically reduced, but it also appears to be clinically reduced as well. The hypoglycemia reported during the trials cannot be attributed to metformin, since metformin itself does not cause hypoglycemia. Instead, it's most likely due to the increased insulin sensitivity that is occurring. So in these cases, in these cases, it's really important that patients be closely monitored and ensure that adjustments of insulin therapy be made when necessary to prevent this hypoglycemia from occurring. So overall, metformin may be a viable option for certain type 1 patients, particularly those that are overweight or obese with insulin resistance. So those patients that have very elevated total daily doses of insulin can benefit from metformin therapy. And it's always important to remember the risk versus benefit analysis. So with this carotid interna media thickness reduction over time, we have a potential CV protective effect from metformin. But then we also have the adverse effects, which are relatively mild, but they are adverse effects that the patients will have to, to deal with on a daily basis. So it's a conversation that is best done between a practitioner and their patient to provide the best care that they can for their patient.